and a victorious amen. New dawn morning for everybody. How am I today? You will be fine for the rest of the year. And this coming year, you'll be fine in Jesus' name. I'll be hearing testimonies from you. Great exploits you will do. And great heights you will reach. And everything will be perfected in your life in Jesus' name. Say, I am sure. The Lord will perfect everything concerning me. Everything concerning my marriage, my family, my work, my profession, my health, my prosperity, my dominion. They are going to be victors all around in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for the great things you have done in the life of everyone, everyone, everyone without exception. Oh Lord, we pray that your blessing will still multiply and increase in every life in Jesus' name. And we are praying that the good things you have done and the good things you are still going to do will be permanent in everybody's life. Joy all the way on. Victory all the way through. I will pray deliverance of dominion will be permanent in every life in Jesus' name. Be with your people. When we're alone, individually, be with everyone. But together, corporately, be with everyone. And all the blessed hands that have helped in this retreat, either they helped far away, we cannot even see them. They're there, they're there, they're there, but you see them. And the people who have rendered service to us, service to the body of Christ, corporately over here, individually over here. Oh Lord, I pray, every blessing you have given the participants, grant unto them in Jesus' name. Bless their families. Bless the work of their hand. And all the work we do for you, even giving a cup of cold water, the least that we have done in your kingdom, nobody will lose their reward in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that today, once again, you open the windows of heaven. Pour it down upon your people. Blessings upon your people. Revival upon your people. The dawn of a new beginning for everybody. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And deeper life shout another deeper amen. God has blessed you. You can sit down. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. We're looking at verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call his name, everybody, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. And so we find the plan of God, the prophecy going to come to fulfillment. That prophecy had been given since Genesis chapter 3. When man fell, the Lord raised up a redeemer. And actually as you read the rest of the Bible, it says Jesus Christ, the Son of God, slain from the foundation of the world. Other passages say before the foundation of the world. The Lord knew what will happen. And in he was going to send a redeemer. His name is Jesus. Here we're told his title that says a lot to everyone. Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Here again we find that the Lord is still talking about this one that will come. Verse 8. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 8. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of the wings shall fill the breath 
of thy land, O Emmanuel. Once again, Isaiah tells us the one coming will be Emmanuel. Eventually he came. Look at Matthew chapter 1. In Matthew chapter 1, reading from verse 18, telling us the account of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, not wanting to ridicule her publicly, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, everybody, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's talking about the birth of Jesus, conceived by a virgin. And the angel confirmed that to Joseph. And I said, this virgin will bring forth a son. And you call the name of that son Jesus. And he tells us the meaning, Jehovah saves the Lord, thy Savior, for he shall save his people from their sins. Look at it as the fulfillment of what we read in Isaiah. Verse 22, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, behold, a virgin shall conceive. A child, virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name everybody Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us that's our subject this morning that's what we're looking into the Bible for this morning Emmanuel and the interpretation is given to us there God with us. You will see in that interpretation three words God, second word with, the third word us. And as we look at the message and look at the personality of this Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. We're going to put emphasis on each of those words. Point number one, we'll set down the word God, his deity, his attributes as God. Emmanuel is God. The second point will dwell on the word, on the word with. It's with us, in partnership with us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us because he is with us. The third point will lay emphasis on the word us. Us here on earth. Us who have believed in him. Us who are holding on to him. Us who are benefiting from the fulfillment of the prophecy. God with us. Point number one. The personality of the eternal Christ is God. The personality of the eternal Christ, God. Point number two is presence with every emancipated Christian. His presence with every emancipated Christian. He comes, he has come. He died on the cross. He paid the price for penalty. And because of that, 
he has emancipated us. He has released us. He has saved us. He set us free. And every emancipated Christian, every released, delivered, redeemed, righteous Christian can rejoice in the fact that he who saved us is with us. Always present with us. You go out, he'll be with you. While you are coming in, he'll be with you. In the midst of friends, he'll be with you. At the time of danger, he will be with you. No minute of your life will be subtracted. You're going to live a full life because the one who supplied that life is always with you. He will never leave you. Point number three, our portion through his everlasting companionship. Our portion through his everlasting companionship because he is with us all the time until the end of time and at the end of time and beyond the end of time as we are crossing over to move from this level to this level his companionship will be with you and as we are crossing over eventually from here to the great beyond that everlasting companionship will not fail you in Jesus' name. We have a portion in Christ. We have an inheritance in Christ. And that inheritance is going to be a blessing to every one of our lives till the end and even through the end and after the end in Jesus' name. Point number one, the personality of the eternal Christ. Let's come back to Matthew chapter one. Reading from verse 21. And she shall bring forth his son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. The responsibility and the power of that salvation rests in Christ. And as you present yourself to him. And you want to be one of his people. It says he. The one who cannot fail. He, the mighty one. He, the one that overcame the evil sin in the world. And he reversed the effect of the curse and the effect of the fall of Adam. He shall save his people from their sins. Now, all this was done. That it may be fulfilled which was spoken by, of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth his son and they shall call his name Emmanuel being interpreted which being interpreted is God with us God with us Luke chapter 1 reading from verse 26 Luke chapter 1 verse 26 and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto us and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. When she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation they should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou has found favor with God. Thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name, and shall call his name, I thought you loved that name, I shall call his name, I thought that's the best name that ever comes out of your mouth, I shall call his name, 
Jesus. It shall be great. And it shall be called the son of the highest. The son of the highest. And the Lord is, and the Lord is God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of David how long? Forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. You can see here it's like a paraphrase of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and verse 7. And it goes on to say, Then said Mary, Unto the angel, how shall this be seen? I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called, everybody, the Son of God. The Son of God. Somebody said, Son of God, God, I did the same. It's like you are the son of your father. Your father is a man, son of a man. And then you yourself, you are a man, son of God, and is God. We're looking at um, Hebrews chapter 1, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and see what the Father ordained when he came and what took place when he came because this Jesus is God you understand an angel will not accept worship man will not accept worship as you read the revelation when the revelation came to john he looked at the angel that was a servant of god to bring the revelation to him and he worshiped him and he just said no 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 don't do that i'm just a messenger a messenger to the prophets no an angel worship god you remember when Cornelius bowed down uh, before Peter, worshipping him. He said, no, you cannot worship me. I'm just a man that is sent unto you. Only God can accept worship. And see here, Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God, what are they to do? Worship him. It's talking about Christ. When Christ came into the world, the almighty God in heaven, the Father commanded all the angels worship him. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 8. Look at verse 8. But unto the Son, he says, unto the Son, the Father, God says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever think about that sentence the father talking to the son the father talking about the son the father pointing out the son and he said and but unto the son he says thy throne O god the father called him god the almighty called him god he said thy throne O god is forever and ever his scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. We're coming to Psalm 45. In Psalm 45, reading from verse 6, you see the deity of Jesus, the divinity of Jesus, the attributes of Christ as God. Psalm 45, verse 6, thy throne O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness. Still talking about Christ. Referred to in verse 6 as God. And hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God. is a funny to the Father now. In verse 6, it refers to him as God. In verse 7, it refers to the Almighty, the Father. God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Actually, the prophets of the Old Testament, they understood, they recognized, they revealed that that Messiah coming, that Redeemer coming, that Son of God that will come, 
that is not, uh, you know, is not below Adam, above him, not below Abraham, above him, not below Moses, above him. The one to come was not like any of them. In fact, he showed he had been from all eternity. Micah chapter 5. In Micah chapter 5, reading from verse 2, talking about the Messiah who was to come. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But thou, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, that though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come. Talking about the Christ who was to come. Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, the king of Israel, whose goings forth has been from of old from, what's that word there? Everlasting. From everlasting. That's talking about Christ. It's been from everlasting. The very son of God is being from everlasting God himself. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 9, reading from verse 6, our Savior is God. Our Redeemer is God. Our healer is God. The one we refer to as Christ, who died for us on the cross of Calvary, is God himself. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, for to us a child is born. This pointing to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, unto us his son is given. This referring to the sacrifice of the Son of God on the cross of Calvary. And it says, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. It's a wonder worker. He'll work, he'll work wonders in your life in Jesus' name. Counsel us is the one that directs us and leads us in the right direction. Look at this. The mighty God. It's referring to a child that is born. It's referring to a son that is given. And he called him the mighty God. The everlasting father. That means the father of eternity. It's being from all eternity. The prince of peace. That's Jesus the mighty God. Of the increase of his kingdom and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. And the zeal of the Lord will perform this. When you receive Christ, you are receiving the Almighty. I said, when you receive Christ, you are, you are receiving the wonder worker. When you receive Christ, you are receiving the mighty God. He will be mighty in your life in Jesus' name. We are giving his identity, we are giving his description. I was told he is God, Emmanuel, God with us. The personality of that eternal Christ. It tells us in uh, Philippians chapter 2 Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 let this mind be you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God that's Christ in the form of God that's Jesus in the form of God as our Emmanuel who being in the form of God thought it not to be robbery to be equal with God it's not something he struggled for it's not something he seized. It's not something he stole. This was his nature from all eternity. Equal with God the Father. You remember now, you'll understand now, when Jesus, after Jesus died, and he was buried, and then on the third day he rose again, and he came to appear before his own disciples to show them, I told you, I'll go, I told you, I'll come. And now he's risen from the dead. When he got to them, Thomas was not there. And uh, the eighth day, the following week, he came. And Thomas was now there. And what Thomas had said before Jesus Christ revealed himself to Thomas, he had said, except I see the print of the nail in his hand and on his side and thrust my hand there, I will not believe. And so Jesus came and revealed himself. John chapter 20, reading from verse 24. 
John chapter 20 from verse 24, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not of them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. You'll see the Lord today. Your heart, you'll see the Lord. Your circumstances, you'll see the Lord. They saw him in the physical because he rose from the dead. We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I see in his hand the print of the nails and put my finger in the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. After each days again, his disciples were with him. And Thomas was there. Then came Jesus, the doors now being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Was he telling you this morning? I said, Was he telling you this morning? Peace be unto you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth each, his peace will abide with you forever in Jesus' name. Then says he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger. Remember, I wasn't there when Thomas said what he said. This is the attribute of God. He hears every word. He knows every thought. And he knows every conversation. And he knew what Thomas had said. And he said, reach hither thy finger. And behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand. And thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, Everybody, one, two, three, go. What did he say? What did Thomas say to Jesus? My Lord and my God. And you know, if he had said that to Peter, Peter said, No, no, don't say that about me. I'm not your Lord, I'm not your God. And if I said that to an angel, the angel will say, no, don't say that to me. I'm not your Lord. I'm not your God. But he said, he said it to Jesus. And Jesus didn't say, uh -uh, don't say that. Don't say that. I'm not God. When Thomas said, my Lord and my God, he accepted. Because it was true. Verse 29. Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. You have believed I am God. You have believed I rose from the dead. <clears throat> you have believed I am your Lord and your God. It says, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they which have not seen me and yet have believed. Blessed are they who are those people. I said, who are those people? Where are those people? Are they here this morning? The Lord says you are blessed beyond the blessing of Thomas. Because Thomas had to see before he believed. But now he said, those who have not seen me in the physical, and yet they have believed. He said, blessed are they. Thank God you are blessed this morning. I said, you are blessed this morning because you believe my God, my Lord, and my God. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 1. God with us. Now we know the one who has saved us, Jesus, is God. The one who has power to heal us, Jesus, is God. And the one who has promised to be with us forever, Jesus is God. Look at verse 23, Matthew chapter 1. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, everybody tell me the interpretation. God with us. The God who is able to do all things, God with us. With him nothing shall be impossible. God is with us. The one who lives in us because he has saved us. God with us. The one that never lost any battle. God with us. The one that will give you the victory every day, every moment, all the days of your life. God with us. 
the one that will keep you. He has given you salvation. He will keep that salvation in you. God with us. The one that is going to bear you through over the stormy sea of life. God with us. It's also always with us. I said it's always with us. I can't hear my people. I said it's always with you. <laughs> Exodus chapter 33. Isn't that what Moses wanted? He said, be with us. Be with us. Let your presence be with us. Point number two. His presence with every emancipated Christian. It tells us in Exodus chapter 33. And we're reading from verse 14. In verse 14, and he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will, and I will give thee rest. The presence of Christ will go with you. The presence of God will go with you. Emmanuel, God with us, he will never leave you, he'll never forsake you. That's how they conquered the Amalekites, because my presence will be with you. That's how they got water out of the rock, my presence will be with you. That's how the manna came, my presence will go with you. That's how all the enemies were conquered, because my presence will go with you. That's why he went before them to search out a place for them, a place of rest, because my presence shall go with thee. And I will give thee rest. It's the promise he has given us, and his promise will never fail. If you are there, you'll say, Great Amen. <laughs> First Kings chapter 8, we're looking at verse 56. First Kings chapter 6, chapter 8, chapter 8, and we're reading it from verse 56. In First Kings chapter 8, verse 56, Blessed be the Lord. That has given us, that has given rest to, to his people. That's what he said. My presence will go with you. I'll give you rest. And he discovered it's a God that cannot fail. Our God will not fail. Our Christ will not fail. Emmanuel will not fail. He said, is God with us. And he gives his people rest according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, every promise the Lord has given you, the one you have known, the one you are still to know, the Lord will fulfill. He will not fail you. He will not disappoint you. It says of the promise which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Look at verse 57. The Lord our God, the Lord our God, the Lord our God, be with us. The Lord be with you. You go out, the Lord be with you. You're coming in, the Lord be with you. You face danger, temptation, trial, the Lord be with you. And the enemies are over in here and there, the Lord, the conqueror be with you. The Lord, our God, be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us that he may incline our hearts unto him. Because he's with us, he will incline our hearts unto him walk to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes he is the one that will give us strength and power and grace and enablement to keep the commandments of the lord is with us it'll always be energizing empowering encouraging us and will walk in the statutes of the lord which he commanded our fathers you'll be victorious in jesus name because he's with us. Because he's with us. He never leaves us. And when there's any confusion, when there is any problem, you'll hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you. I'm here, I'm here. I am with you. I will pull you through. I will see you through. And you will not be defeated in your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 46, we're looking at verse 5. Psalm 46, reading from verse 5. God is in the midst of her. God is in the midst of us. Jesus is here with us. And he says, and she shall not be moved. You will not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The Lord will help you. That challenge, the Lord will help you. And right early, it will not be late in Jesus' name. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttereth his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The head of the army 
is with us. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of battle is with us. The conqueror is with us. The one who conquered Satan and all evil spirits and all dark powers, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. I didn't hear your amen. That battle is the Lord's battle. He'll fight and win. That difficulty is a challenge for the Lord. The Lord will fight for you and you will win. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I, I am God. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is, where is he? I said, where is he? He's with us. As we are going back home, the Lord of hosts is with you. As we're going back to work, the Lord is with you. As we cross over to the new year, the Lord will be with you in Jesus' name. The God of Jacob is our refuge when he's with us what happens when he's with us what happens isaiah chapter 41 isaiah chapter 41 reading here from verse 10 the assurance that he is emmanuel and because he's emmanuel we have his partnership because he's emmanuel we have his presence isaiah chapter 41 Reading from verse 10. In verse 10, fear thou not. You will not fear. I said you will not fear. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. What the Lord told the children of Israel, our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us, He has the same power as God the Father. And He has given us the same promise as God the Father. Is bringing provision to our lives as God the Father promised the children of Israel in the Old Testament. And he says, Now fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am thy God. Emmanuel is your God. I said, Emmanuel is your God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. It will uphold you. Verse 11, Behold, some of the people that were incensed against thee, I said, some of the people that were incensed against thee, ah, all, somebody shout all, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive against thee shall perish you will not perish. I said, you will not perish. The Lord will see you to the final end. He'll see you through in Jesus' name. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. And even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Look at verse 14. Fear not. Fear not. That one Jacob and ye men of Israel, I will help you. I will help you. Every moment you receive help from on high in Jesus' name. I will help you, says the Lord and the Redeemer and the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new, sharp, threshing instrument having teeth. Have you gone back home? Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and, shall, and make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt find them and the wind shall carry them away and the wild wind shall scatter them 
and thou shalt rejoice. And thou shalt rejoice. Every time I see in the new year, I'll see you happy. I'll see you joyful. And then if I'm able to talk to you, I say, what has happened? I say, another miracle has taken place. I got one last week. I'm getting one now. Because this year, this coming year, joy, joy, joy in your life in Jesus' name. Everything of sorrow will vanish away. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Because in chapter 43, Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah chapter 43, I'm reading here from verse 2. Because of this, that's why your joy is going to know no bounds. Look at verse 2. When thou passes through the waters, I will be with thee. Emmanuel will always be there. Emmanuel will always be there. And no sea will drown Emmanuel. No fire will burn Emmanuel. Therefore, when thou passes through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Say, I will not be burned. It says, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. It says, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, thy Savior, thy Savior. I give Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopian Sheba for thee. Since thou was precious, in my sight. Say, I am precious in his sight. Say, I am precious in his sight. Don't you ever say the opposite? Don't you ever say, I am nothing? I'm terrible? I'm weak? I'm like, you know, a nobody? No, you are not a nobody because Emmanuel is with you. I say, God is with you. And he said, You are precious in his sight. Thou hast been honorable. Say, I'm honorable. I am favored. And I have loved thee. Say, God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. This I know for the Bible tells me so. I have loved thee, therefore I will give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not in verse 5. For I am with thee fear not i am with thee and this is what the lord is telling us through emmanuel is god with us i will bring the seed from the east and gather thee from the west somebody shout amen and the Lord is telling us that every promise he has given us is going to be with us until everything is fulfilled i see your cup running over I see your life filled with joy. And I see the goodness of the Lord in your life. Because everything he has promised, he'll be with you. He'll be with you. He'll be with you until he finishes, accomplishes everything in Jesus' name. Amen. You want to mark this in your Bible? In Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28 in verse 15. Genesis chapter 28 verse 15. And behold, I am with thee. And behold, I am with thee. When you turn to the right, you see him there, I am with you. You turn to the left, you'll see him there, I am with you. You're looking for how will I cross that Jordan? How will I how will I scale that mountain? How will I move to the next level? It says, Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest. When you go, you come back again. Because the Lord will keep in all the places that you go. And will bring thee again into this land. For look at this, look at this, look at this. I will not leave thee until. I will not leave thee until. I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Everything he has spoken to you of days done of a new beginning, he will not leave you. He will fulfill everything in Jesus' name. Hey, look at the response of that. Response to that in the New Testament in Romans chapter, chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. 
What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for me, if God be for me, if God be for me, who can be against me, he will fulfill all his word, all his promises in your life in Jesus' name. Emmanuel, God with us, is God the personality of the eternal Christ. He is with us, his presence with every emancipated Christian. Now is with us. Point number three, our portion through his everlasting companionship. It's our portion through his everlasting companionship. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be our child and shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name. Everybody shout the name. Emmanuel. Which being interpreted is, was the interpretation. God with us. God with us. God with personalize it. God is, make it personal. God is, say it, let everyone hear you. God is with you. Look at what he said in Matthew chapter 28. We've read the beginning of Matthew. Now the end of Matthew. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The one who is with you, the one who is going with you, the one who is going to abide with you, the one who is going to empower you, the one who is going to help you, the one who is going to protect you, the one who is going to heal you, deliver you, the one who is going to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. He has all power in heaven and on earth. And he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, and lo, say it aloud, I lo, and lo, and lo, I am with you. How often? I am with you. How often? I am with you. How often? I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. To the end of that problem is going to be with you. To the end of your life is going to be with you. You know, you're born again, you're saved, you're a child of God. Emmanuel, Jesus, Jesus who saves, he has saved you. And he says, I'm going to be with you every moment and every day for the rest of your life, even to the end of the world. I will be with you. And the church shouted, Amen. It's with us, it's going to work with us. It's with us, it's going to help us. It's with us, it's going to conquer with us. It's with us, it's going to conquer for us. It's with us, it's going to give us the victory. Look at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 20, and they went forth. Brothers and sisters, you are going forth. And they went forth. I said, you are going forth. And they preach everywhere. Everywhere you go, what are you going to do? I said, what are you going to do? I said, what are you going to do? You preach everywhere. The Lord walking with them. The Lord walking with them. It's a walking relationship. It's a profitable relationship. It's a practical relationship. Every good thing you go to do, and as you go to preach, he'll be walking with you in Jesus' name. You'll never be confronted with a problem he cannot solve. Every problem that confronts you, he'll walk with you. All the problems will be solved in Jesus' name. You'll never come to a crossroad that he doesn't know the right way to take. Every crossroad you come to, it will point the right way to you in Jesus' name. You'll never be confronted with any battle that he cannot overcome. Every battle you come that comes against your life, he'll walk with you, he'll overcome in Jesus' name. The Lord walking with them. And confirming the word and confirming the word, every word you have heard, there's going to be a confirmation. 
every promise you have heard, there's going to be a confirmation. And every good thing you are desiring, there's going to be a performance, a confirmation in your life in Jesus' name. Confirming the word with signs following. With signs following. With signs following. I'm waiting. I said with signs following. Verse 17, verse 17. These signs shall follow them. These signs shall follow them. That believe. Are there believers in the house? God knows you. He knows you're a believer. These signs will follow you. Wonders will follow you. His power will follow you. The fulfillment performance of the promises will follow you. Because Emmanuel is with us. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They will cast out devils. Devils will get out of your life. Out of your family. Out of your business. And out of the people you are ministering to in Jesus name. They shall speak with new tongues. New tongues. New language. New thoughts. New song. New testimony. New preaching. New power. New proclamation. You have the new tongues in Jesus name. They shall take off serpents. You throw them away. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Nothing will cut short your life. Poisons will be neutralized in your life in Jesus' name. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall... They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall... Look up here for a moment. Have you ever tried this? That you know, they shall lay their hands on the sick. You say, I don't seek any sick person. But look at yourself. If you are sick, the anointing is in your hand. I said the anointing is in your hand. And right there in your home, right there anywhere you are. That pain, where that pain is, where that infirmity is. You lay your own hand upon the sick. And that's yourself. And you will get well. And then you now see a neighbor, you see somebody else that is sick and he will get well as you lay those anointed hands on him, on her, in Jesus' name. Verse 19, so then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Every good word you say, the Lord will confirm in Jesus' name. Zechariah chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 5. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5. For I, says the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about. The Lord will be unto you a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. He'll be the glory in the midst of your life and family in Jesus' name. Verse 8, For thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory, as he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, from now on, he that touches you, touches the apple of his eyes. He that touches you, touches the apple of his eyes. Nothing evil will touch you. From day to day, you go from strength to strength. You go from grace to grace. And you go from power to power. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33, reading from verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 33, reading from verse 25. This is yours. Uh, not just yes or amen. This is mine. I said this is mine. It's yours already in Jesus' name. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. 
Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. You cannot even, you cannot get this just sitting now. Why don't you stand up? Why don't you stand up and then pay attention? This is mine. Say, This is mine. Shout, This is mine. This coming year will be the best year you ever lived in your life. It will be a year of power, a year of the presence of God, a year of partnership with God. All the tears of the past you will forget in Jesus' name. All the heartaches of the past you'll forget in Jesus' name. All the failure of the defeat and the poverty of the past you'll forget in Jesus' name. All, you know, living from hand to mouth you're going to forget in Jesus' name. All the poverty, all the penury you're going to forget in Jesus' name. All the family problems you'll forget in Jesus' name. And all the harassment in the place of work you will forget in Jesus' name promotion for the new year purity for the next year prosperity for the new year because in verse 25 thy shoes shall be iron and brass as thy days so shall thy strength be as thy days so shall thy strength be that is the older you get you will not become weaker you become stronger more powerful more energetic more resourceful, more useful and profitable. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is not like the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy, in thy hell, in this excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge. The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath thee at the everlasting arms. He shall throw out the enemy from before you. And shall say, destroy them. Israel shall dwell in safety alone. Wherever your house is, wherever your accommodation, habitation is, you will dwell in safety in Jesus' name. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and, and wine. Also, his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou. Happy art thou. Joyful art thou. O Israel, who is like unto thee? O people saved by the Lord, the, sh the shield of thy hell. Who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt stretch upon their high places. You are going with Emmanuel. Emmanuel is going with you. His presence is going with you. His promises are going with you. His power is going with you. Every day, there is a promise that is going to be fulfilled. Every week, there's a promise that is going to be fulfilled. I am climbing higher and higher in the strength of the Lord. In Jesus' name. All the things that wanted to stop your life, terminate your life, destroy your life. Everything is now all over. Behold, I give unto your power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And from today, nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Are you there? I said, are you there? Open your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. That's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. He is Emmanuel. He is Emmanuel. Is God with us. Whatever God can do, Jesus can do. Whatever God has done, Jesus can do. He was with the children of Israel. He brought water out of the rock. Water will come out of the rock for you. Honey will come out of the rock for you. Blessing will come out of the rock for you. Emmanuel, Emmanuel is God with you. His presence will go with you. Promises will go with you. His power will go with you. His goodness will go with you. His grace will abide with you. You have faith in the Lord. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You are passing through the waters. You will not be drowned. Difficulties will not overwhelm you. Will not overflow you. Will not overturn your life. 
You're going to be victorious, victorious, victorious. Forget the past. Forget the former things. A new dawn has come. A new day has come. A new life has come. A new possibility in your life. A new progress in your life. A new strength in your life. A new authority in your life. A new anointing in your life. It will be with you. It will be with you. He will be with you. God with us. His presence will not fail. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So you may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. He'll be your help. He'll be your helper. He'll be your support. He'll be the lifter up of your head. He lifts you up. He will lift you up. He will lift you up. He will not allow the enemy to overcome you. He will not allow Satan to overcome you. He will not allow the dangers to overwhelm your life. It's with you. It's presence. It's power. Great possibilities of power. Everything with you. With us. You have a portion in Christ. You have a portion in Christ. You have his everlasting companionship. His everlasting companionship. He abides. He's a friend, not an enemy. And he's a friend all the way through. When you have difficulty, a friend, he doesn't abandon you. You're faced with temptations and trials greater than your strength. He's a friend, he will not abandon you. Your face with weaknesses in life. It's a friend, he'll not abandon you. It's Emmanuel, God with us. He'll be with you. He'll be with you. He will be with you. All that is you are the everlasting arms. As your days are, so will your strength be. As your challenges are, so will your strength be. As the difficulties are, so will your strength be. As the duty, as the responsibilities are, so will your strength be. You find strength adequate for the task. Power adequate for the problem. Faith adequate for the mountain. Possibilities in your life. The negativism is gone. Now something practical. Now something progressive. Now something positive in your life. It'll be with you. It's a manual. It'll be with you. Cannot fail, will not fail. It's a manual. And it's God. And it's God. And it's God. Higher, greater, bigger than any mountain, than any difficulty. Will not fail you. When darkness comes, the light of the world, this light will dispel every darkness around. Emmanuel. 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 God with us. God with you. God with you. God with you. He'll be walking with you. He'll be traveling with you. He'll be confirming the words in your mouth. He'll be the joy of your life. He'll be your support. Other needs you will always be those everlasting arms. He'll be your supply, supplier. He'll be your sufficiency. You'll find him good every time. Good every time. Good every time. He'll not hurt you. All the harm that may come to you. will throw them away. Is your help? Is the lift up of your head? Is your constant companion, everlasting companion? 
is the one that comes to set you free. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout Emmanuel. God with me. God with my family. God with my church. God with us. Anything we pass through. Anything we pass through. You will be our Emmanuel. Always with us. Always with us. Don't leave your family. It's in that family. Those problems are going to be solved. Don't pack out. Don't pack out. Don't run away. Those problems are going to be solved. Don't leave that place of work. The promotion will come. All the promises of God. Look up to heaven. Look up to Emmanuel. Things are going to be better. In Jesus name. Raise up that hand. Emmanuel has come to your age. Emmanuel has come to support you. Emmanuel has come to lift you up. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the revelation of Emmanuel. We thank you for the appearance of Emmanuel. We thank you for the coming of Emmanuel. Not only that he came to the world, not only that he came to Calvary, he comes to this brother. He comes to this brother and from now on, your power, your presence will abide with everyone in Jesus' name. Every negative thing of the past in any of your children, wipe them away in Jesus' name. That loneliness, that sadness, that sorrow, that sickness, that poverty, that darkness, that moving object, whatever it is, with all the mountains, I pray, come out in Jesus' name. Blessings from on high, benefits from on high, miracles from on high, signs and wonders from on high, joy from on high, power from on high. Bring out your people in Jesus' name. Be the God in their lives. God in their families. God in their businesses. God in their profession. God in their utterances. God in their evangelism. God in their ministry. God in the work of God in their hand. And I pray, Lord, they will not fail in Jesus' name. Emmanuel, God with us. Your partnership will be with your people every time. When they're alone, your partnership there. Your presence there. Your promises, yes, and amen in their lives. Fulfill it in Jesus' name. With us. With us. With us. And with everyone. Lord, I pray your presence will go with everyone. you be the shield before them. You'll be the umbrella over them. You'll be the power, the solid rock under them. You'll be the guide before them. And you'll be the watchman behind them. Right, left, front, back. You will surround them. They'll be under the wings and the shadow of the Almighty. All through their lives in Jesus' name. A thousand is falling by one side, ten thousand on the other side. It will not come near them. You'll be a wall of fire around everyone in Jesus' name. And the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord will abide inside you. And anywhere you go, as you go in the name of the Lord, according to the will of God, the Lord in his power will be with you. Emmanuel. 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 God with you. Every miracle you need, Emmanuel will supply. All the healing you need, Emmanuel has supplied. Deliverance dominion you need, Emmanuel has supplied. Every need of your life, Emmanuel has supplied. You'll be a happy Christian, a joyful Christian, a conquering Christian, a victorious Christian, a successful Christian. 
a confident Christian, an overcoming Christian. They'll be higher, greater than your enemies. Higher, greater than your problem. Higher, greater than your mountain. Go on now from strength to strength. From power to power. From grace to grace. From glory to glory. And the Lord preserve you until you get to heaven. A place for you in heaven. And you'll not miss your place in heaven. You'll not miss your reward in heaven. You'll not miss the presence of God until you cross over. The new year is coming. Emmanuel will go with you to the new year. All your expectations to be fulfilled all through this year to the next year in Jesus' name. Abundance and the better life and the prosperous life over your life as you move over and you move on in the Lord. Sufficiency, abundance all the way through. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.